recently made a video titled Three Things the NARC Does When You Go No Contact. And it addresses pretty immediately after going no contact with the narcissist, the play-by-play -play of what goes through the narcissist's head and how they react to no contact. Today's video, I'm gonna look at what the narcissist does down the line. After you've been no contact for a few months and the breakup is established, what's happening with the narcissist then and why do we care? My name is Amy and this is Narcoway. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. I haven't done the sub of the week for a couple of videos, so I want to bring that back. This week's sub of the week is Connie Sue. Connie, I see you posting on so many of my videos and giving such great feedback and participating in the comments. And I just want to thank you personally for that. I really appreciate all of my subscribers, everybody who participates in the comments. I love for you guys to help each other out when I can't reply to all the comments. Um, everybody in this community is so strong and you have all been through this horrific heartache or you're still going through it. So I, I really admire those of you who reach out and help others. So please keep doing that, everyone. I love it so much. Thank you. And thank you, Connie Sue. Okay, let's get right into the video. When we think of the narcissists down the line, why, why are we so focused on that? Why are we so concerned on what the narcissist is doing, what the narcissist is thinking, what remorse they have, if any, do they have guilt? What are they doing with the new supply? How are they treating them? Let's address before we get into to them, why we are so focused on that. And I know we are, I know I was, and my answer to that is, think about when you're in the relationship with the narcissist. How much of your focus goes towards them? All of it. All of your energy, all of your focus, all of the time is spent on the narcissist. You are constantly directing your life around the narcissist to keep them happy, to deflect any anger or rage that's coming your way. You're constantly walking on eggshells. You're fixing and you're repairing damage constantly to avoid them flying off the handle. Or you're dealing with the repercussions of it. If you've not been able to walk on the eggshells or band-aid up all the little infractions, then you're dealing with the full-on blowout, which is inevitable and is pretty much the definition of being with a narcissist. That is your constant life. That is the constant cycle. It's the devalue and the discard. And then for a minute, you'll have a Hoover and idealization again, and then right back to devaluing and discarding. So you are constantly in this traumatic, emotional state of dealing with the narcissist. You never get to focus on yourself. How often in your relationship do you get to just sit back and relax and put your feet up and not worry about anything? It's very rare. It's very few and far between that you can do that, that you can let your guard down. Being with a narcissist is a full-time job. It is your job to make sure that they are taken care of because most of them are quite incompetent as far as day-to-day -day taking care of themselves. It's uh, very difficult to get them, a lot of them, to do simple domestic chores like doing the dishes, taking the trash out, cooking, cleaning. So, so a lot of people are uh, parentified in their narcissistic relationship, taking care of them, a grown-ass adult, taking care of them like a child. So there's that. There's the emotional side of it where you are, you're constantly on edge because you don't know what's coming. I don't know if when I come home, my partner is going to lose their shit because of some stupid little thing I forgot to do or some stupid thing I did do. 
whatever, how simple it is. Maybe you decided to make something for dinner that they didn't like, or maybe you chose to buy tickets for an event that they didn't want to go to, or maybe you made plans to go to your parents' house for dinner two weekends from now. Well, that you know, that's going to cause some problems. So you're constantly on edge. You're constantly placating the narcissist and you're thinking of them 24 seven. They don't leave your brain. And this is by design. This is how the trauma bond is created. This is how it becomes so codependent, your relationship and how it's so hard to leave because you are, you become so used to catering to the narcissist, taking care of the narcissist and designing your daily actions in and around the narcissist. So it's only natural for when you leave the narcissist for that to continue. When you leave the narcissist, those thoughts and feelings and that hyper focus that you have on them, it doesn't just go away. This is going to take time. You have to break the bond that you have to the narcissist. And this is why you find yourself focusing and wondering what they're doing. Because you do that when you're in the relationship with them. You're constantly trying to mind read in the relationship because they expect that of you. They put that on you that you need to foresee what their behavior is going to be. So you become very good at learning how they're going to react and trying to gauge how they are going to um, behave under certain circumstances. So you need to take time for that to, to go away. It's not going to go away overnight. So when you do go no contact, which is why it's so hard to go no contact, but once you do and you shut down that communication, your brain is not going to automatically turn off. You're going to have to work very hard and fight those urges to, to look at them on social media and to talk to their friends to get information. So that gives you a little bit of insight into the psychology behind why you are so focused on them. So know that that's totally normal. That's totally okay. And you know what? It's going to go away in time. It is not going to last forever. Yes, you're going to be very interested in what the narcissist is doing and, um, what they're thinking and and that's totally normal and you know what in time that will go away the the truer no contact you can be if you can't be full no contact because you have children together um then at least you can go gray rock and as little communication as possible is best as always to move on and get through it so now i just want to touch on what happens to the narcissist a little bit down the line Say you're six months out of your relationship and you're no contact, you're still going to wonder. The narcissist probably has new supply. They've probably moved on. They may have stopped hoovering you. So now you're questioning, well, did they ever love me? Do they feel remorse? Are they thinking about me? And uh, I, I'm going to smack down some, some harsh truth here. And um, the answer is no. They have no remorse. They have no guilt. They probably don't think about you very much. Definitely not as much as you think about them. And they are now moving on to their new supply. They are in the love bombing stage with their new supply. And you know what? They're a completely different person than the person you knew. They're not the same person at all because narcissists mirror who they are love bombing. They have to create a character because their personality is so convoluted and so fake. They have to create a new personality for every victim. If you were into science fiction and true crime and watching movies, chances are your narcissist was into those same things and your narcissist could have conversations with you about that. They wouldn't mind staying home on a Friday night watching, um, you know, whatever it is that you're interested in. Their likes are going to meld very, very well with yours. 
And you know what? The new supply can be completely opposite of you. Maybe the new supply is athletic. They like sports. They like going out. The narcissist, lo and behold, is all of a sudden Mr. or Mrs. Athlete who loves sports and can't stay home. They change. They are chameleons. They are true chameleons, narcissists. And they are going to adapt to whoever they are leeching off of. Narcissists are parasites and they need a host to feed them. And they are going to adapt to their host. So they're not thinking about you because you're old news now. They, they don't have any reason to think about you. The only time they need to think about you is when they're using you and they're preparing you and they're grooming you and they are love bombing you. So they're feeding you, getting ready to manipulate you or are manipulating you. So they're focused on what's in front of them right in the current moment. And that's, that's pretty much a straight as I can be about that. I know it's a little bit harsh and it's hard to hear at first, but as time goes on, as you get further and further away from your relationship with a narcissist, it actually becomes more comforting to know that they're this robotic type person. They're not very human-like in the way that they feel emotions. They're very calculated. Everything they do is for a final purpose, which is them gaining supply and them creating a bond to their new supply. So their new supply creates a bond to them. And then that entraps them. It makes it harder for them to leave. So that's what the narcissist is focusing on down the line. The other reason that this is kind of good to accept is... It, it makes it easier for you to let them go. It, it should make it easier for you to give up on the hope. And that's what you have to do. In order to let go of a narcissist once and for all, you have to accept that there's no hope. There is no future. There is no change. So the sooner you accept that, the sooner you believe in that, the sooner you can cut those ties and move on and focus on yourself. And then what you're going to find is instead of watching videos on the narcissist and what the narcissist is thinking, what the narcissist is feeling, what the narcissist is doing, you're going to start watching more videos about you, how you can get over this trauma, what you can do to better yourself and how you can move on and live a happy and healthy life. And, and that's what I want to do. I really want to encourage you guys to look forward, not focus so much backward on the narcissist, but look in the mirror at yourself. Look how beautiful you are. Look what a beautiful, worthy, loving, special person you are and how much you deserve and focus on that. That narcissist guy or girl, they're not worth your time and your energy. So leave that in the past and move forward. Okay, guys, I hope that sheds some light on this topic for you. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, please do that now at Narcoway. Also, if you do follow me on Narcoway um, on Instagram, then you probably saw a recent post this week that I made um, that I'm actually going to be traveling for a couple of weeks. So this will be my last video for just a couple of weeks. I'm going to be out of the country and traveling with my beautiful daughter. Uh, her and I are taking a much deserved and earned trip and I'll tell you guys all about it when I get back. Um, so if you need some inspiration and some encouragement and some support while I'm gone and not posting new videos, please look at any of my old videos. They're always there for you guys to check out anytime. Okay, I will see you guys all in the next video and as always, I love you all.